pulled the front page. The new Kia seat isn't just built on a new platform, they've gone and got rid of the apostrophe too. The new seat, then, replaces the seat, and even gets an uppercase first letter in the process. How conventional. Seriously, how conventional. Pretty conventional. This is the replacement for the European designed, engineered and built Kia seat that has been in service since 2012, and it picks up similar themes. This steel monocoque, front drive, new K2 platform contender sits in what Kia calls the C1 segment, alongside the Ford Focus, Vauxhall Astra, and other non-premium hatchbacks. This one's a five-door hatch. There might be a more premium seat variant along later. It's on the money in terms of size, then, at 4.31 meters long, the same as before, and with the same 2650 mm wheelbase, although everything in the new car's cabin has been, they say, shifted backwards by 68 mm. What that means, if I understand it right, is that anything cabin related now happens a bit further rearwards than before, they've moved the driver's hip point back and down a bit and then redesigned around that with a requisite shorter front and longer rear overhang. That all helps crash protection, apparently, and visibility around the A-pillars too, though those are set slightly further back than before, in an effort to make the bonnet melt less discreetly into the glass area, so it's all more striking. It kinda works, too, not that you can tell too much from these pictures of it in disguise, but it looks a little more bold, a little more premium, a little more Peugeot 308 than before. While the car has not been revealed yet, we've had a drive in a pre-production version to get a first taste. The seat now has more room in the pleasingly finished enough front cabin, which uses respectable materials, albeit ones that don't look quite as solid as a VW Golf's, but probably are, underneath it all. It also has the second biggest boot in the class, behind the Peugeot 308, because they don't count the Skoda Octavia as being in that class. Some of all that room has had to come from somewhere, I suppose, and my niece suggests it's from rear legroom, which is no better than fine. In the UK, we'll get 1.0 litre turbo triple, 1.4 naturally aspirated, a new 1.4 turbo, replacing a naturally aspirated 1.6, and a powerful 1.6 turbo petrol engine, and two 1.6 diesels, when the seed goes on sale in late summer 2018. I've tried the 138 BHP 1.4 turbo pedal driving through a 6-speed manual, and a 134 BHP diesel with a 7 SPD dual clutch automatic. The seat gets McPherson struts at the front and an independent multi-link rear suspension setup, with 16 in or 17 in alloys, the latter with Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tires, which Kia's engineers like a lot for their grip and ride compromise. The seat isn't quite finished, hence the disguise so we'll overlook some creaks. Easily, in fact, partly because they're not that bad but mostly because the petrol car is dynamically really appealing. The old seat didn't drive badly, but this one's seriously good. The body in white is both stiffer and 25 kilograms lighter, and although extra kit has put most of that weight back on, having rigidity where it matters surely helps, while the steering ratio is quicker than a VW Golf's. Kia wants its cars to feel dynamic and the seed does. It's responsive, more so than a Golf or Astra, less than a Focus, has sound control of its body, but rides well and rolls a little too. It's good, honest, surprising fun, while the engine's quiet and gearbox light and easy. All of the above is less true of the diesel, which makes a fair degree of top-end noise, and much flatter of foot while not noticeably riding any better. There are still tweaks to do so I suspect they'll sort the noise, though I doubt too many of the dynamics, before it goes on sale late this summer. The lighter engine and gearbox combo, then, is the way to go.